going to Pat White at quarterback, giving some different looks. White in there now, but even the sort of trick play with A.J. Guyton throwing the pass on the last play of the third quarter. Here's where the Eskimos have struggled this season, second last in the red zone. Calvin McCarty plows and crashes to the 10-yard line. Well, the commissioner in the house, Mark Colon, has stunned all of us the last couple of weeks with the announcement that he will leave after his tenure. 2015, a guy who has done tremendous work. Yeah, there are hiccups, there are always challenges, but when he leaves the Canadian Football League, he will leave it better than when he came in. Yeah, there's absolutely no question about that. Second down and two. White goes the other way and will spin forward. And not sure if he got it or not. This will depend on the spot if the Eskimos will go first and goal. Doesn't look like he did. Well, and this is a big play from the strong side linebacker, Keon Raymond. Stacked in behind the tackle here, but just mirrors the quarterback and there sees a hole and shoots it. They're going to be shy here, and they may bring White back on the field for potentially third down play. Third down. Got a will be third and one. Inside. And White will return. Brings a couple of big friends with him. Eskimos need touchdowns. They need them in bunches here. Game that completely got away from them in the third quarter. Against a team that they have lost 10 straight to. Which is almost unfathomable when you think about this rivalry through the years. But frankly, the Eskimos haven't been that good the last few seasons. Better this year, but still struggling against. Well, the loss is more meaningful this year with the teams coming into this week so tight in the standings. They need one. White behind center. There was a premature whistle, so a whistle before, just as the ball was snapped. Now did Edmonton move here? Flag on the play. Procedure, Edmonton number 60. Five-yard penalty oh, that's costly. remains third down. Justin Sorensen again, and he hasn't played very much this season. So they are going to go for the points here and bring out Hugh O'Neill. And I think it's actually number 66. Matt O'Donnell, the right guard. You're going to see that movement before the ball goes. Yep, it is. The big guy. So it became third and six, and so they will get the field here. two for two today but field goals are not going to get it done if they want to get it done down 18 for their provincial rivals back at commonwealth stadium rod black dwayne ford and ryan rashad our entire crew here and mil mascara <laughs> famous luchador <laughs> he's with us as well Beautiful night for football, not so good for the home side right now. And around sweep from Mo Price. So far, the Calgary Stampeders on the verge of a sweep of the Edmonton Eskimos, and Stamps have a chance to get to 9-1 and one if this score stays up. And watch for the pullers on the offensive line here. Everybody's rolling, big bodies getting out in front, Stanley Bryant. One of those blocks. Edwin Harrison plugged in at that right tackle spot this week for an injured Dan Heil. Shane Bergman's been playing at left guard the last few weeks for an injured Brander Craighead. As it's been in past years with this team, somebody goes down, they plug in the next guy. It doesn't impact them in terms of success. John Cornish stymied that time. 
Yeah, Cornish right. has not been the factor, Dwayne. Excuse me, that he was five days ago, quite obviously. But well, I, I would suggest that he's been a factor in different ways when John Cornish goes for 163 yards against you five days ago. You're going to focus on him in the in the rematch and devote a little bit more defensively to shutting down John Cornish. So every time there's a play action fake, every time Bo Levi Mitchell looks like he's going to hand the ball off to this guy, it's going to freeze the defense. It's going to slow down that pass rush a little bit. It's going to get defensive backs peeking in the backfield, and that's going to help out the receivers and offensive line in terms of making some plays downfield. Mark Wayne McDaniel has been one of the beneficiaries of that. Moen Charbonneau, Campo as well, and of course Bo Levi Mitchell. Put on a clinic. Kendall Lawrence. 11 and a half to go. AJ Guyton has a touchdown and also a completed pass. More on number 82 when we come back to Edmonton. As it was five days ago, the Eskimos find themselves in arrears of the Calgary Stampeders. Third night for for this guy. Here's Ryan Rashog. Yeah, absolutely, Rod. It wasn't pretty on Monday. A couple of drop passes for Guyton, one in the end zone, and then after one play showed a lot of frustration towards his teammates. While well, he took a lot of criticism from the media following that game, veteran receiver Fred Stamps took him aside, had a little chat with him, said that he doesn't need to worry about that kind of stuff to shake off the negative energy. Also talked to him about showing up his teammates a little bit. Fred told us that's not going to be an issue again. So you see Guyton, once again, a featured part of the Eskimo offense today, and maybe a little thank you pass back to Fred Stamps. Nichols floats one, lofting it for... Kendall Lawrence on the far sideline. Yeah, Fred said, hey, if the play comes up, throw me a pass. But right now, the Edmonton Eskimos have more to worry about than personal redemption or anything like that. Again, they want to measure themselves against the best and this metamorphosis that they've undergone this past season when they were 14 last year could be 14 and 4 this season. But right now, Calgary is taking it to them again. Nichols sideline and laying out, unable to make the catch is Bowman. It has not been a good half for the Edmonton quarterbacks. They've only completed one pass, and it hasn't come from a quarterback. No, it was the the Guyton to Stamps pass on that uh, that reverse and slot back option. Struggling horribly to throw the football, and I assure you, with 11 minutes to go, down by 18 points and obvious passing situations, it will not get any easier against Charleston Hughes and the Calgary Stampeders. Go, get up, get up. Cedric Cunningham tripped up near the 50 of Edmonton, and get a feeling as time becomes the enemy for the Eskimos. Uh, one more touchdown from this guy, and that could seal it. The Eskimos have not shown any resistance offensively. Well, we mentioned off the top his outstanding efficiency rating, and it has a lot to do with this touchdown passes to interceptions ratio. By far the best in the Canadian Football League at, at 15 to 4. And this, when you combine that with his age, use that stat as a reflection of decision making that's pretty impressive remarkable people will talk about his start Mo price and john huffnagel and stan peters management talked about this virtual kid when he came to the stan peters a couple of seasons ago coming fresh out of college in eastern washington he went to southern methodist as well he was from hawaii Decided to go after two seasons at SMU over to Eastern Washington where he broke records again. Yeah, and has continued the success in the Canadian Football League, but obviously that outstanding career at Eastern Washington set the stage for him to move on to the next level. It sets him apart as his poise, his patience, fearlessness. Downfield again, oh, almost making the catch is Cunningham. Laid in there nicely, a good burst at the end of the play by Cunningham. It looked initially like that was going to be well overthrown. A nice extension here to try and get to this one, but unable to come up with the catch. He's the second receiver on your screen into the boundary. It's a little rub there to free him up from Anthony Parker. 
probably should have had that one. Seventh two and out in the game for the leaders. Nine and a half. Eskimos have got to find the end zone again against a team that has not given up many offensive touchdowns. Number one in points. Look at this kick by Rob Maver to the two-yard line. Doesn't get any better. Rob Maver, one of the best in the business. The old coffin corner, almost to perfection. That's the half it's been for the Calgary Stampeders, who lead 31-13 at Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton. A couple of big upsets at Flushing Meadows earlier today. Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer will not be in the final. Both upset. Edmonton Eskimos. Time running down here. They drop their 11th straight to their neighbors from the south. And there are a couple teams in the West that'll be happy should this score hold. We'll meet tomorrow, by the way. And, you know, I mean, I think Saskatchewan would, would have been quite content with a Calgary loss, which would have created that three-way race for first. But certainly uh, Winnipeg and BC don't mind seeing the Eskimos come back to the pack a little more as everybody wants to be closer to that mix for a home playoff game. So the pressure gets to Matt Nichols on that one, forced to throw that football away. Absolutely atrocious offensive second half from the Eskimos. And set up by that punt by Rob Maver that pinned them deep. Have to at least consider taking a safety here. They're not. So how bad does that look? Take the safety. Add now, another 15. Stamps will scrimmage at the 30-yard line and put this one out of reach if they can get to the end zone. No yards. Edmonton, number 38. 15-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, as good as the Eskimos have been this season and their turnaround continues, they have no answer right now for the Calgary Stampeders. And defense has done the job. It's been the guy that Sean Lemon calls that guy who's back to us a genius. Yes, Rich Stubler. He's being a little reclusive right now. <laughs> He's actually talking to someone. <laughs> He's not camera shy. Mitchell. Going for the throat here. Incomplete for Nick Lewis. I'll decide if he gets that one out a little earlier, it's a bit easier throw. Here's the Stube, offensive coordinator. He's been around this league and has had success in almost every stop. Yeah, he sure has, most recently. Part of that BC Lions coaching staff a couple years ago. He was here with the Edmonton Eskimos. As their defensive coordinator, he's done a couple of stints with the green and gold over the years. 27 years in the Canadian Football League as a coach in some capacity. Look at the delay draw. Cornish now. Straight arm. And you're so right, Dwayne, that bullseye that has been on John Cornish in this game has created openings elsewhere for the Calgary offense to work. And it, it's a dilemma that's not only going to face the Edmonton Eskimos, but every team that faces Calgary as long as number nine is in that lineup. Well, it's a big theme in the West Division. I mean, it's, you know, and you'll see it as there's more play within the division. It's not just the Calgary Stampeders, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, a team against whom, again, you have to shut down the run when you play against the BC Lions with Andrew Harris and Steph Logan. You need to be able to shut down the run. It's, it's bread and butter. John Cornish, 15 for 73 now. Rene Paredes. Boots this through. Take it to a 21-point lead again. Hey, Paredes, his numbers not quite what they were last year. 
Most outstanding special teams player from a season ago. Remarkable year. Seven minutes to go here. Well, the NFL season is underway, of course. Tomorrow, the 2014 weekend continues. Bolts and Broncos. Sunday night football, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on TSN. A number of NFL cuts that are available as well. Some players that might be making their way north. Over the top, unable to hang on. It's going from bad to worse here offensively for the Eskimos. Hard to believe this is the same team that was in the first half. Matt Nichols had them clicking. Yeah, again, the Calgary defense is, has done a terrific job. Adarius Bowman, who played such a big role in the first half of this ball game, they've managed to contain him, a guy who's been one of the best offensive players in the Canadian Football League thus far. I do think that Edmonton faces some challenges without Mike Riley at quarterback, and that's not, not a slight on Matt Nichols at all. There's a good play. Finally, a completed pass down the sideline. And once again, it's... A.J. Guyton, their biggest play. It's the only completed pass from a quarterback in this second half, 39-yard game. Uh, maybe Fred Stamp should have a, a little chat with all of his teammates, given the impact he's had on A.J. Guyton, who's had a pretty good day, a pretty productive day here for the Edmonton Eskimos in this rebound game for him, so to speak. They need a few more people making big plays if they're going to have a shot. You see those second-half numbers, one of eight from Nichols. Deep down the sideline, jump ball. And Darius Bowman. Watch closely at the goal line. And the ball was uncatchable. And Jay Shell in on the coverage. Well, we talked about it with Calgary. You want to don't want to let the defense dictate what you're doing. Keep your best offensive players in the game. You want to get the ball in their hands. Nichols trying to get Adarius Bowman involved, but Lin J. Shell has become super sub for these Calgary Stampeders, plugging in on this defensive lineup wherever they need him. There was a cover. Here come the Stamps again, bringing the house. Nichols rolls and just tosses it up for Nate Kuhorn jump ball. Knocked down by Fred Bennett. There's a penalty flag, though, as Nichols threw the ball. Sean Lemon was close to him, and Nichols is pointing to Lemon. Could be roughing the passer. Major foul, roughing the passer. Calgary, number 40. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So that keeps this drive alive. And Lemon followed through a little bit here on the hit. It's pretty clear at this point. thought we had gotten away from that. Well, the Eskimos benefit. Nichols threading the needle, but incomplete. By the way, it's only Calgary's second penalty, and the first one for yards in the ball game. Uh, it's been one of the differences in the ball game. No question.